guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you some super awesome shortcuts created by some really cool people. If you've ever used If This Then That or Workflow, you'll be familiar with the concept, but the basic idea is you create shortcuts that automate tasks that would otherwise take multiple steps to complete. I've tried both of these apps in the past and failed to find anything super useful for me. Uh, it seems like they're just trying to solve problems that don't really exist. Shortcuts, on the other hand, is really powerful. This is because it's baked in at a system level, which gives it access to the entire OS, including Siri. Obviously, there's some limitations as far as how much Apple's going to allow people to access through the shortcuts, but so far they've seemed pretty generous with it. Plus, Apple doesn't have to approve these shortcuts like an app in the App Store. You can just create it and share it immediately with just a simple link. Now, in my opinion, shortcuts are a great way for the iPhone to continue to grow feature-wise, while Apple focuses on stability and optimization. The only limitation to shortcuts is how willing and able people are to continue to build really useful shortcuts. After all, it can seem really daunting to start from scratch when you're not really sure what you're doing yet. Luckily, there's places like Reddit and YouTube full of really smart people willing to share their creations with the world. Today, I'm going to show you some of the most interesting shortcuts I've gathered throughout the first few months of using the app, and as always, if you're interested in anything you see in the video, links will be down in the description. By the way, if it looks like I can't see, that's just because it's, it's really bright outside. Same goes for if my face is like really dark compared to the uh, the snow in the background. It, nah, I'm, I'm trying. Hey! Oh yeah, I'm good. Yep. Thanks for checking in, though. Starting off with my most used shortcut, we have Recently Played, and Recently Played does just that. It shows you your most recently played songs from Apple Music. Not sure why Apple removed this feature from Apple Music, but at least we have a shortcut now to get us by. Basically, you can just add as many songs as you want. You tap on them, it adds them in order from top to bottom. I can't figure out how to get them in the order that you tap them. I think it's just because of the way the menu works, but for the most part, you can just rearrange them afterwards if you don't like the order they're in. Oh, and another thing that's really cool is if you tap again on a song after you've already tapped on it, it will unselect it instead of adding a second one like it does in the, uh, the playlist builder in Apple Music which is really nice. It makes it a lot easier to sort of second guess your decisions. By the way, don't forget to comment on all the weird songs I haven't recently played. Uh, I'll be looking forward to it. Most Played is very similar. It pulls up all your most played songs on Apple Music and lets you pick from them. Again, judge away. I can take it. Next, we have an even simpler widget that just redirects you to the Google Assistant. Now, yes, Google Assistant has its own widget, but this just sort of saves space by condensing them into a single panel instead of having like the Google Assistant widget and then the shortcuts panel. It's just just a more streamlined option. Same with Shazam, quick access from anywhere on the phone. Kind of nice. I also have a super useful laundry timer for those of us without washing machines that make loud buzzing noises when they're done. All you have to do is adjust the timing when you first download the widget to however long your laundry takes to complete, and then it will add a reminder to your preferred reminders list telling you your laundry's done. So instead of setting like an actual timer where it goes off, it'll set a reminder so it sort of stays there until you mark it as complete. It's a little bit better, and it's definitely less intrusive. Another simple one from the gallery is the tip calculator. Just enter your bill amount and what percentage you'd like to tip, and it'll show you your total and the tip on its own. Really useful, not that I eat out a whole lot, but you know, whenever I do, I'm sure it'll come in handy. Imgur Upload lets you add an image to Imgur with just a couple of taps without an account or having to add a title to the picture. This is really useful if you want to share images without having to include the image directly or having to upload it to a site like Google Drive. Basically, once the image is on Imgur's website, you can just direct people to that link, and then they can download it from there without any loss in quality and without you having to find a way to upload the picture to wherever you're trying to share it from. Share Wi-Fi is super cool. It took me forever to get this thing to work, but it seems to work just fine now. All it does is generate a QR code with your Wi-Fi name and password so people can just scan it and join your Wi-Fi without having to go in and enter the password manually. It's really, really cool when it works. For some reason, a lot of them just didn't work with my Wi-Fi network. Shorten URL does just that. It shortens whatever URL you have copied to your clipboard. Days between shows you how many days are between two dates, so you can pick a start date, for instance today, and then an end date, which is whatever you're counting down to, and you can see exactly how many days it is until then. Apple Frames lets you add device frames to screenshots. It accepts several iPhones, iPad Pros, Apple Watch, MacBook Pro, and even the 5K iMac. No need to tell it what device the screenshot's from. It will figure out how big it is and automatically add the correct screenshot to it. There's a lot of, app, there's a lot of uh, shortcuts that do this, but this one's just really nice because it includes a lot of different Apple devices. Text above picture lets you quickly and easily make memes in your spare time because, you know, something you gotta do. Just select a photo and type whatever you'd like to say above it, and it will create you a beautiful little meme just so you can share it with all of your friends. 
Item lookup uses your camera to scan a barcode and then lets you search Walmart, Amazon, or Target for that product. Super simple, super straightforward, but it's nice that it includes all three websites. SpongeBob is an interesting one. It basically takes normal text and makes it really annoying to read. Not quite sure why you need that, but I'm sure you can find a reason. Watch music video is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if you're listening to a song in Apple Music, you can just click the shortcut and it will redirect you to the music video in Apple Music if it's available. Share Apple Music Profile generates a link to your Apple Music Profile, and I'm kind of curious, do you follow your friends on Apple Music? I think this is a thing people use on Spotify, but I don't really know anyone that does it with Apple Music, so I'm curious if people use it. Speaking of Spotify, here's one of my all-time favorite shortcuts. As many of you know, Spotify does sort of a year-end wrap-up where it summarizes all the things you listen to throughout the year, and I've always wished Apple Music would do the same thing. This shortcut does just that. It's really well put together and looks absolutely incredible. You can pick any year all the way back to 2015 to summarize. You can create a playlist of your most listened to songs if you'd like to do that. And then you can create a PDF version of the file or you can just open it in Safari if you just want to view it. Once it's done, you'll have a beautiful web page full of album art and different colors, uh, summarizing all the statistics from your year in Apple Music. Hats off to whoever managed to make this thing happen. It's incredible and I really can't recommend it enough. Alright, I give up. I'm like... Hopefully that doesn't, like, darken my face too much. I think it'll kind of adjust. Oh, hopefully. Uh, moving on, we have shortcuts to play Beats 1 Radio and Melanie Martinez, because as you can tell, I'm kind of a big fan. Obviously, you can configure these to play whoever you want, although I would recommend Melanie. Next, we have some photo-related shortcuts, starting off with split image equally. What this does is split a picture into multiple smaller pictures, so you can post them sort of in line on Instagram and fill up your whole feed with one big picture, split into, like, nine different uh, blocks. Photograd does the opposite, instead letting you combine multiple pictures into one smaller image. Photomap basically just overlays a little map in the corner of your picture. You can make it of whatever location you'd like, and you can resize the map and move it around depending on where you want it positioned. All-in-One Utilities is a crazy shortcut that has, like, all sorts of things built into this one shortcut. From ultra-low power mode to a uh, special noise to remove moisture from your speaker to an all-out version of 2048, um, there's really a lot to explore. I'm going to leave that up to you and just say it's definitely worth a download. I'd, yeah, I'd recommend checking it out. Backup Shortcuts is a common one to see in people's libraries. This one is unique in that it backs up individual shortcuts instead of putting them all in a zip file. I don't even know how to get them back from there. This one, you can just tap on it and it'll uh, bring you to a page to reinstall it. Next, we have a bunch of shortcuts that work really well with the share sheet. Dark Mode turns all the white to gray on most all websites. I've seen some that sort of invert the colors on the website, which this just works a lot better than that. It looks really nice, and surprisingly, it doesn't mess with a whole lot. Remove Paywall lets you avoid paywalls on sites like the New York Times by redirecting you to the same page on Outline.com, which is a website that does just that, removes paywalls. This is great if you find yourself running out of free articles on a regular basis. The next couple of personal favorites of mine, starting with Amazon Price History. I've been using Camel 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 for years now, and this makes it a whole lot easier. Basically, Camel 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 shows you a graph of the price history over time on Amazon of whatever item you're looking at. You can run this website from the share sheet either in the Amazon app or on Amazon's mobile site, and it will, within seconds, bring up a nice graph of the price history. YouTube Downloader lets you download videos straight from the YouTube app or the mobile site straight to your camera roll. Super useful and really well made. Similarly, YouTube MP3 Downloader downloads the MP3 file associated with the video you're watching. In theory, this also lets you download videos, but for some reason it downloads them without the audio, so nah, that's why I have both. Social Media Downloader lets you do the same thing, but for websites like Instagram, Facebook, other stuff like that. Again, this is supposed to work with YouTube, but for some reason I get an error every time I try to use it, so I still have the YouTube Downloader. Uh, honestly, the only website I've used it on is Instagram, and it works just fine there. Background YouTube lets you play uh, YouTube videos from Safari in the background. It does this by redirecting you to a new website. Honestly, it looks pretty sketchy, but, mm, you know, it gets the job done. Wayback Machine lets you see older versions of websites with just a couple of taps. It's a, it's a little finicky, but it does seem to work. Search website is supposed to let you find whatever you're looking for on a particular site just from the share sheet, but all it really does is Google it, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Download file lets you download files from Safari, which honestly I haven't found to be super useful. I found an mp3 file to demonstrate how it works, but for the most part if you're looking to download something from Safari, there'll be a download button anyway, so I don't I don't really know what it's there for. Get file size may or may not work, because looking at the same mp3 file, if you look at the files app, it's like 4.5 megabytes, so maybe not the most accurate thing. Speak body vertical seems to work just fine, but it does sort of block the article while it's reading it, so I think I'll stick to just selecting it and having Siri read it instead, because, you know, 
kind of like to be able to see what it's reading. Scan your PC lets you scan a barcode. It will then search for that item's name and add that to whatever uh, reminders list you set up in the shortcut. Really, really cool. Maybe not super useful. Scan code will scan a barcode or QR code and then copy the contents to your clipboard. Log water lets you easily log your water consumption without having to open the health app. Flashlight Morse code really requires no explanation except why you might want it. Set bedtime is super interesting. It basically finds out when the sun is going to rise tomorrow and then sets a reminder for you to go to bed eight and a half hours before that. Not really sure who's that dead set on getting up when the sun rises, but if you are, this is really cool. Pronounce GIF aims to finally settle the debate. It's just too bad that it's wrong. GIF. One of the original shortcuts to really gain attention is this one called Police. It's easier to look at what it says than to actually run it. Basically, it turns on Do Not Disturb, lowers your brightness, makes a note of your location, and begins to record video. It's designed to comfort you when you get pulled over in case you're worried that the police are going to do something to you. This sort of creates a log of the incident. Last but not least, we have Reminding Reminders. This just pulls up a list of all your unscheduled reminders without like a time deadline on them and puts them into a text document. The idea here is to remind you of all the things that you have without a due date, but you know, you have to remember to run the shortcut, so maybe, maybe not ideal. So as you can tell, there are some really smart people that have put a lot of time into creating some really cool shortcuts. I'll leave a link down below to all the shortcuts I mentioned and some of the places I've been finding them. I encourage you to support the people that are making them because without them, this community will just sort of die out and the app will become useless. If you have any shortcuts you'd like to share with the community, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. I will be sure to check them out. Maybe I'll make a part two of this video. Today's question of the day is, do you think shortcuts are the future of iOS or do you think they're destined to be just for power users? Let me know by tapping the I or dropping a comment down below. Don't forget I post new videos every single week, so I definitely like to see you back next week. But until then, 